Hello mga ka-teammates! Welcome again to my travel blog. We will land at Sydney Kingsford International Airport in just about an hour. I can feel the excitement because we will land in Australia for the first time. Of course, as first-time visitors to a place, we should be mindful of important things we have to prepare to enjoy our stay fully. The more prepared you are, the less travel stress you have, the more time to relax, and the more we will enjoy our trip. So mga ka-teammates, come with me as we do a step-by-step -step guide to cover all the things we need to do as we arrive here at Sydney International Airport. So the first step begins before we even get to land in Australia. By this time, you should have all the necessary documents you need to present before entry. Visa check, boarding pass check, passport check, incoming passenger card check. The incoming passenger card was distributed shortly after the plane took off from the airport of origin, so you can ask your flight crew if you don't have them yet. Accomplishing it early rather than after arrival will save you time in the immigration clearance. The content of this incoming passenger card on the first page contains information about your name, your passport number, flight number, the place to stay in Australia, and the different things you are bringing into. The second page asks about other vital details that pertains to your stay. So I will write down the link in my description box, the instructions on how to properly accomplish this card. By the way, mga ka-teammates, since September 9, 2022, masks are no longer required on flights traveling to Australia. However, travelers continue to be encouraged to consider wearing a mask to reduce the personal risk of contracting and spreading COVID-19. People entering Australia do not need to provide evidence of vaccination status anymore, neither a need to provide proof of negative COVID-19 tests. People entering Australia do not need to complete the Digital Passenger Declaration or the Maritime Travel Declaration as well. Once you get off the plane, follow the signs that direct you to the immigration clearance areas. There's only one direct hallway to follow until you get to the duty-free shopping area. Once you get to the duty-free, just continue down the hallway until you get to the immigration check area. Since taking photos and videos in this area is prohibited, I will not be able to show you everything. When you arrive at the immigration area and before getting into a line, check if your passport has an RFID chip. You can go to the RFID chip machines, which you'll need to put your passport into, and then they'll again give you a card with a barcode. Then follow the step-by-step -step instructions by the machine as you make your way to the express immigration check line. Unfortunately, this lane is for Australian visa holders only. If you are a non-Australian passport holder, or your passport does not have an RFID chip, you can skip the machines and go directly in line for the immigration check at the counter. This counter is on the left-hand side and you'll need your incoming passenger's card, passport, and visa. Once cleared, you will be given back your passport and incoming passenger card. Once you have completed the immigration checks, make your way down the stairs to the baggage carousel. A screen directly in front of the stairs lets you know which carousel your bags will be on. There are trolleys located throughout the area for you to use if you have many baggage. Mm -hmm. 
after the baggage carousel, proceed to the customs and quarantine inspection area. Expect to be questioned by border security about what you bring and may be required to open your bag based on what items you get. So try to provide clear answers as this will make the process much easier and faster. After passing through customs, you can now exit at either Arrival Exit A or Arrival Exit B. Using either exit will lead you to the Arrival Hall. And down the Arrival Hall are specialty shops and food and beverage stores. This coffee shop has one of the best coffee we have ever tasted yet in Australia. After having a cup of coffee, the next thing we need to get and secure is SIM card. It may be costly to use roaming for calls and internet, so it may be wise to get a local SIM for the internet because not all places in Australia have free Wi-Fi. There are a lot of telcos to choose from. You can buy SIM cards for your mobile device from Optus, Telstra, or Vodafone in the International Terminal Arrivals Hall. However, it is worth noting that they don't always offer the exclusive or the cheaper bundles available in the city. So we are advised to get the prepaid plan from Lebara, which only costs us 12 Australian dollar for a 60 gigabyte internet that is suitable for 3 months, which is just enough to power us for using Google Maps and Viber messages while we are outside. So this can be recharged as needed, and it's a good data plan indeed. Airport has a free Wi-Fi and you can use this while looking for personal Wi-Fi. Because when you go out of the airport, chances are airport Wi-Fi can no longer be available. For example, in the parking or waiting areas, the airport's Wi-Fi may no longer reach such distance. Total Wi-Fi is usually free and available, so for the more extensive data requiring use, you might as well do it there rather than using your Wi-Fi. You may be interested in buying an Opel card along with the SIM card. Here at Sydney Airport, you can buy cards at Newslink or WH Smith bookshops. The only train stations that sell Opel cards are the two airport stations and most regular stations will have a news agent or convenience store nearby where you can buy a card. Like for example, the transport shop, which is just outside the entrance in Circular K, Woolworths, uh, Town Hall 2, and News Link Kiosk in the Winyard Station. Opel card system will help you use the city's extensive public transport system, which includes trains, buses, ferries, and light rail. Their electronic ticketing system allows you to use one card across all these types of transport. There are a reward for frequent travel and daily caps and fares that can save regular users and even visitors on short trips. Opal system offers travel caps, like for example, a daily travel cup means you pay no more than $16.30 per day for adults and $8.10 a day for a child to travel anywhere in the network. A weekend travel cup means you pay no more than $8.15 for adults and $4.05 for kids for unlimited travel on Saturdays and $2.50 on Sundays. A weekly travel cap is pay no more than $50 a week for adults and $25 for kids when traveling on all models of Opal-enabled transport from Mondays to Sundays. There is also a 30% fare discount when traveling on weekends, public holidays, and outside peak times. But take note that travel caps do not include access to airport terminal stations. Can I use a credit card or a debit card instead of an Opal card? The answer is yes. You must be careful to use the same card every trip if you want weekly or daily cap benefits. 
you will also need to use a different card for each traveler. And if you are an overseas traveler like me, you may be charged foreign transaction fees by your bank, so an Opal card might still be the best idea if you take more than a few trips. The card cost at the airport is $35 while it costs $20 for adults and $10 for children if you purchase it elsewhere. You can upgrade or recharge your card online or from kiosk or vending machines near stations. So if you want more detailed information about Opera cards, you can check out also the link in my description box. From when you start thinking about your next destination to when your feet hit the welcome mat, the right apps can make the whole experience smoother and less stressful. They help you know where to find a reliable ATM while on the road trip and which restaurants are tourist traps. They keep your itinerary organized, alert you of good deals on flights, help you find the last-minute hotel rooms, provide directions to top destinations, and many, many more. And the good thing is, most of them are free to download. And my top must-haves are Google Maps, weather apps, translators, and currency converters. And another must-have is your social media platform to connect and share with friends and loved ones what you are enjoying at the moment. Sydney International Airport is 10 kilometers to the south of the city center. So depending on your destination, you have many options to choose from. In most of the capital cities in Australia, you can easily access your destination by train, taxi, bus, airport shuttle, car rental, or riding sharing services like Uber. Take note that you must install the app and the available internet before ordering the ride sharing services. Or, you can have someone personally pick you up at the airport. If there are a few of you, taking taxi or an Uber can save you some money, but if it's only one or two, taking the train may be good for you. If you need to store your bag someplace, there are baggage storage areas that are available for a price. So let's get to the directions for all the options for leaving Sydney International Airport. If you have booked a car or looking for a rented car while in Sydney, all the car rentals located at the international airports are right next to arrivals A and B. A friend advised me before coming here to Sydney, and I think it won't hurt to share it with you too, my teammates. You could rent a car but not going to be helpful for the city center. Why? Parking is expensive and traffic violations will be more likely, especially if you are used to driving on the right side of the road. It is only helpful if you are going around the suburbs or between cities. Taxis are an excellent option for private transportation because they are easy to find but more expensive. Driving into the city center takes about 25 to 40 minutes, the average, but can be much longer during morning and evening rest hours, that is from 7 to 9 a.m. and 3 to 7 p.m. You can find taxis at designated and signposted ranks in front of all terminals. Taxi rides cost between $45 and $60 for one-way trip, and most of the time, any tolls you may go through are an added expense. So it is best to avoid if you must travel across the city or during peak traffic hours. But it is best if you want an easy, private transportation and your accommodation is just nearby. From these designated taxi ranks, we walk further outside. This area is currently under construction, so pay attention to the signs. At the end are arrows that shows the area for rideshare and express pickup zones. To the left is the green sign for the rideshare, and to the right is a yellow sign for the express pickup zone. 
the express pickup area is if you have family or friends who are picking you up. And the express pickup area has a 2 minute, 5 minutes, or 15 minute pickup time. If you are trying to get the ride share, expect the same traveling time as taxis. Using ride shares like Uber or Lyft is perhaps more budget friendly and offers you a private transportation as an alternative to taking a taxi, but it requires a bit more work. You can find your drivers at the passenger's pickup line at the arrival area. So the cost of this trip is around $40 to $60. The buses, on the other hand, runs on a timetable, which you can find online or at the bus stops. The bus goes to most places around the city, so getting close to your destination should be easy, but they can be slightly tricky to navigate, especially for newbies at least, and the frequent stopping can take a long time. You can find these buses at bus stops that are located in front of arrival area. The buses that stop here are the 420s, N20s, and the limited 400 buses. The 420 buses either goes to Burwood or Mascot Station. Mascot Station will take you around 17 minutes to arrive, while the N20 buses which stops at the town hall will take you 30 minutes. In addition, there is a limited 400 bus service which travels between Bondi Junction and East Garden. The bus costs between $3 to $6 depending on peak and off-peak time, so it is a good option if you're looking for the cheapest fare. And it is best to avoid if you're in a hurry or find the routes too tricky to navigate. If you pre-arrange shuttle transportation with a hotel or a tour, your organizer will likely tell you where exactly to find the bus, but you can also get the information on shuttles from ready-to-go desks that are located at the arrivals hall. There are a lot of transport options to choose from, but I think the best way if you are staying in the central business district is to take the train. There's a convenient railway link from the airport to the central station. This is the train station at the south ends of Sydney's business district. It will take about half the time of a taxi and is also a fraction of the price. And from central, you can take connecting trains or buses to your destination. The train station is located at the northern end below Terminal 1 past McDonald's restaurant. The train station is located directly under the airport terminal. Train stations are located at two platforms, Platform 1 and Platform 2. It depends on which way you go. Platform 2 also uses the T8 line in different direction towards MacArthur. Platform 1 uses the T8 line that goes towards Central and the City Circle. You can use the escalator or the elevators if you have oversized packages, like the buses and other public transport system. Sydney's train runs on an Opal system. Alternatively, you may also tap your Amex, your Visa, Mastercard, Google Pay, or your Apple Pay. The actual cost of the train is 4.40 plus an airport access fee of 14.30, bringing to a total of $18.70 more or less. Once you get to the platform, there are real-time updates for the next train as well as how busy each train carry exists. The train runs every 10 minutes from the northern end to the terminal from 5 a.m. to midnight. Note that there are no luggage racks on the train. It gets busy and packed during rush hours and they run in double-decker configuration. One tip is you can mix and match your choices. You can take a bus to the mascot, 
Then take the train station from there and get a taxi to your place of stay at the end of the station. This way, you can avoid the airport access fee and will save you some money especially if you are on a tight budget. And now, we are at the Circular K station. And look at the view! And we are just 5 minutes walk to our hotel which is Shangri-La, Sydney. So there you go mga katimates! I hope I was able to share you some tips and tricks for more stress-free travel to Sydney. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave some comments if you want to share something, and of course, please, please subscribe. Your support will surely help me create more videos to share with everyone. So between now and then, goodbye mga katimates. See you again next time, and thanks for going this far with me. Take care, stay safe, and I love you all.